You know, most of us know how difficult it is to receive words that hurt us. To be the receive, on the receiving end of words that diminish, criticize, judge, you know, shame us. It, it's, it's really hard, isn't it? And all that makes a lot of sense. But the thing that's a little more puzzling about us human beings is that many of us, and I would suggest most of us, all of us, find it almost as hard, maybe as hard, to receive words that affirm and validate and love. That when, for example, somebody comes to us and says, oh, thank you so much for all you did for me. I, can't, I just can't imagine that you did this for me. Rather than simply saying, oh, thank you. You know, we often say, oh, well, don't mention it. It really wasn't that big a deal. When someone says that they admire us, we're often aware that there is something in us that is finding it very difficult to just sit with that. In the Bible study on Tuesday, we got on this subject of how hard it is to just receive words of love and gratitude and admiration and affirmation. And there were endless stories. There was no shortage. So what's that about? We know we have a, we have a significant story in the Bible about Jesus and Peter. You may remember this from Holy Week. That when Jesus is washing the disciples' feet, when he is loving them, lavishing care on them, doing what no self-respecting rabbi would do for his students, when he gets to Peter, Peter said, you will never wash my feet. You know, Peter was simply not willing to take that in. You know, I should be washing your feet. What are you doing washing my feet? What are you doing caring that much about me? And of course, Jesus says in response, you know, if you don't let me wash you, you will have no share in me. If you don't let me wash you, you will not be able to share that kind of love with others. You know, why is it so hard for us to receive love? Again, maybe harder than to receive words that diminish and judge and ridicule. I have a hunch that there is something deep down inside us that simply finds it very difficult to accept that we simply could be that lovable, that precious, that wonderful. And when those words come, we just simply want to push them away. My wife is an Episcopal priest and when on the 20th anniversary of her ordination, I knew she'd be leading a, a small service at the church she then served and so I, invited people to come and join her for this service. Normally there were only six or seven people there. This night there were about 20 there and she was just stunned when these people walked in and wasn't quite sure why they were there. She suddenly then figured out why they were there to, to celebrate her ordination after 20 years. But when the little time came for her to give a little sermon, a little homily, I interrupted her and I said, Sorry, but I need to say a few words. Just what your wife wants, right? And I got up and I just began to thank her for all her years of service to people, all the ways in which she's loved them, cared for them, for the delightful energy she brings. And as I was kind of winding up from my remarks, um, I said something like, Oh, you know, see if I have anything else to say. And she said, no, that's quite enough. And she literally made me sit down. 
You know, I think like the rest of us, she was finding it hard to take in that much love. And maybe the reason we can't do that is that it's just so disarming to our normal way of constituting who we are. We normally think we're worthwhile because we have done things, accomplished things, justified our existence by our productivity. And in those moments, there's a voice that is saying beyond ourselves, I love you just the way you are. And there's something inside of us that just says this simply cannot be true. Today, let God love you as you are. The next time somebody shows gratitude, just see if you can take it in. These will be the words of God letting you know that you have been created in God's image and that you are very, very good.